What do you want? I just need a TI launch pad. Can't you see I'm busy here? Don't, Don't be held hostage by, by the board, board order. Go to digikey.com to find thousands of boards in stock, all ready for immediate shipment. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Make Live. I'm Tyler Weingartner, your host, and today we are going to be building a cell phone. Uh, this is the Diesel Punk cell phone. It's a project straight from the uh, the pages of Make Magazine, Volume 56, and. Uh, Make Live is a series where we are building projects straight out of the pages of Make Magazine, um, and it is made possible by our good friends at DigiKey. If you're not familiar with who DigiKey is, they are uh, a electronics distributor and supplier. Uh, they uh, make all the parts that are available uh, that are going into this uh, build today, and uh, they're they're an awesome partner that makes this entire series possible. And so we want to start off by thanking them. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and get into what is going into this build. Um, the first thing we're going to be taking a look at here, um, the first, and this is really the main key component to this build, is um, this is the Adafruit phone up board. This is ba or actually, in particular, this is the Adafruit Feather phone up board. The uh, phone up board is. Um, now, apologize if you've been sticking around, but at least now you'll be able to see it. So I'll run there through this really quickly. Um, this is based around their Feather series of boards. Uh, they are um, just a wonderful series of components that all stack together. They're based around the uh, Arduino development set. And uh, they have a bunch of really cool features. And this, in particular, um, has a slot for a SIM card. Um, and this allows you to plug in your own GSM SIM card. Uh, the one we're going to be using today is from T-Mobile. Um, no particular reason other than they're the most convenient place for me to get one uh, in preparation for this. Um, and it, uh, you can not only, I mean, you can do a number of things that you uh, would want some kind of telephone interface to, such as you could have a robot that you could control by SMS messages uh, or any number of things. But uh, in this case, we're going to be building a cell phone. Um, and I've already soldered in this speaker. This is how you're going to be able to hear uh, the caller on the other end and this microphone. That's how they're going to be able to hear you. Um, if you have a cell phone, of course, you're going to need an antenna. Uh, not much to go there, but you're just going to be attaching it just to that little connection point there. Um, of course, a phone needs a keypad. That's how you dial numbers. And this is just a normal 12 key display. On the back, you see that headers. That's how we're going to be connecting to the, um, the Adafruit, the, the phono board. Um, we have our LiPo battery here, a 20 uh, or 1200 milliamp hour battery. Um, I don't know offhand what your standby and talk time is with this battery, but one of the great things about this is um, this phone powers up really, really quickly and powers down even, um, even quicker. So, it, uh, so even if you're not actively in a call, you can power it down and save your battery life. But I think this should power it um, you know, like a regular cell phone battery for the most part. Sorry for bumping the camera there, a little camera shake there. And then one of the last components we're going to be looking at here is this. This is the OLED display. Um, and it just connects through these seven pins and will be giving us the display for the cell phone so we can page through our, our contacts and our favorites, look at the number that we're ready to dial, get st uh, calling status and other things like that. Uh, it's just a simple black and white text only display. Um, and I'm holding it upside down. This is the enclosure that's going to be all going into. Um, this is milled out of a half inch piece of walnut. Um, you can see the, so that's where all the components are going to be going. Um, this is where the microphone goes, uh, where the keypad, um, where the screen, and then the speaker. And this is our sort of oversized charging port on the, on the side here. And then the front, uh, we have a little uh, logo there that is uh, etched into the wood uh, via laser, uh, laser etching machine. Um, but with all of those components uh, itemized, oh, one other thing to talk about here is this perf board that I've gone ahead and soldered in advance. Um, what we have here is we uh, have all the ribbon cable connections. That's why we're going to be connecting to the keypad. And it's easier to see on the underside here. This top row is where we're going to be connecting all the pins for the OLED display. 
And um, we had to make a couple of additional connections here uh, because we, there's a part where we needed to uh, shift the pins from the OLED over to the phono board over one row. Uh, so we just had to make a couple of extra connections there and also these uh, power and ground connections for the display. Um, so uh, I did that off camera ahead of time so we can save a little bit of time on this build. Okay, speaking of build, let's get into it. So one of the first things we're going to be doing is we're going to be gluing the OLED display and the keypad into the housing. I've already heated up my, um, my hot glue gun there. That's how we're going to be doing this. This actually fits in pretty well as like a friction fit. But we're going to glue it in uh, just to be extra sure. All right, get that pressed in there. Flip it over, take a look and see how it's looking there. That is looking pretty good. It's looking like a good phone. And then I also put in some, some Sharpie markings here. Get a sense of how this is going to, where I need the display to go. And take a look at that. So that's pretty much how it's going to look when we're done. But we are not done yet. I saw someone was asking, will it work with Cricut Wireless? Um, I am not sure. I don't remember the, I believe it needs to be a GSM provider. So if Cricut is CDMA and I don't remember what they are, um, again, if it's GD GSM, you should be fine. Um, but it should, if you look at the Adafruit Fona um, product description on the DigiQ website, you should get a good sense of what networks it will work with. good bit of hot glue there to hold everything in place. And of course, if you have any questions about this build um, or about these boards as I'm going, please feel free to ask them in the, uh, in the chat comments there and I will ask them to the best of my abilities. Start to get my soldering iron uh, heated up there. All right, and now we're just waiting for the soldering iron to heat up and the very next thing we're going to be doing is placing this perf board right on top of those pins right in there. Let's go back to the other camera so we can take a look at that. Actually, while well, we're both waiting for the soldering iron to heat up and the hot glue to cool down. So while we're waiting for that, I want to once again uh, thank uh, DigiKey, who is our sponsor for this series. Um, they're an awesome partner and a great place to buy all the components that you're going to need to build this project or any other electronics or Arduino project that you're working on. Um, they sell a huge variety of components, both the uh, completed components like you see here, like the Arduino and the um, uh, Adafruit boards that we're using today. And they also sell individual components so if you need capacitors, resistors, MOSFETs. Um, they sell the, the entire range of stuff. Uh, and it is uh, fantastic to be, to be working with them on this series and for them to make it possible. All right. I think we're starting to get those things are starting to hold into place. So the next thing we're going to be doing is lining up these pins. Nope, not there. Just like that. And get some solder going here. Let's go ahead and get right in there.
Okay, that is the display board soldered into place. And now the next thing we're going to be doing is soldering in. Actually, before we do that, I want to take a moment and trim off these extra, these little protruding header pins. So we're going to be pretty much stacking the the speaker almost right on top of there. And I want to have a nice flat place for that to go. And then I'm going to actually be covering the these pins with a bit of electrical tape just so that there's no grounding issues with the, uh, the speaker. <sighs> Rachel, I suppose you could call this a little impractical. I mean, it certainly isn't going to have all the features of your, um, you know, your iPhone or your Android phone or any, any other modern handset, but, um, you know, if you want a really, really, really simple phone, um, you know, the Nokia just relaunched their, um, I don't even, their, uh, one of their classic handsets, I, I, the 3100 series, I don't remember which one. And I think that there's a certain appeal to that. Really, really simple phone um, that uh, doesn't have all the fuss and distraction of a modern cell phone. Um, so uh, the only drawback to this one is that you cannot play Snake on it. That's kind of a bummer. All right. Now that we have those two parts in place, uh, trim the pins off, and the um, we're going to put this, drop this phone aboard into place here. And um, I actually needed to run this additional uh, red jumper here. That is what's going to be providing um, power to the display. Um, and so I need to extend it just a little bit here. Uh, so I need to create, you know, sort of an extra header, a bonus header pin there. And just getting this to line up and drop into place. I feel like something is blocking me here. What's going on? There it is. Now that's fitting nicely into place. I'm going to solder the top row first. So get these mic and speaker wires out of the way. And one thing I'm hoping you're all going to be doing when you stick around to when we get this thing built, which will be, uh, should be in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to be posting the phone number for this phone uh, into the live chat here. So uh, please feel free to call me once we get this thing running. Get a little bit more solder here. Vivian Kong is asking, do I know the C constant amperage of the LiPo you are using? If the LiPo is over discharged or overdrawn, it will burst into flames that are hard to extinguish. Do you know how safe the components uh, are if the also, how safe are the components if it was dropped? Um, I don't know the C constant amperage of the LiPo I'm using. I do know that they're 
Um, this board does have occasional draw spikes of up to two amps uh, during some of the functions of the phone. Um, but as far as the average, no, I do not. Um, I would generally defer to the fact that um, this, uh, this is a component that comes from Adafruit and they do some degree of testing uh, on their stuff to make sure they're safe, of course. It is still a LiPo battery. Uh, it's a relatively unpackaged one, although it does have the uh, circuitry on here, to, all the protection circuitry. Um, but still a LiPo battery. I mean, it, it packs a ton of energy into a small package. So um, if things go wrong, um, that energy has got to go somewhere. Um, but I think this should be relatively safer, safe as the uh, components in, in your cell phone, as long as you don't have a Galaxy Note 7. Um, moving on. Um, we are now going to be soldering the other half of the solder pin. Oh, wait, no, I still have one more pin to do here. It's not an active pin in this build, but one I still want to do just for the sake of security. This one looks like it maybe needs a little bit more solder. Okay, flip this around. Get these wires back out of the way so I can get the back side here. Make sure I can see this all well. Or make sure you can see it all well. Almost had a little solder bridge there. That's nothing we want. Almost done here. After we get these solders, these last two solder joins connected, we'll wire in the keypad. And that's just plugging the jumpers into those headers there. And uh, we've got a little bit more hot gluing to do. We've got to Got to get this speaker into place and put the microphone into place. But first, let's get the keypad connected. And we're pretty much just going to go right in order here. Move the camera up a little bit. I'm going to double check my reference really quick so I know that you don't use all of the pins on the keypad. You actually skip one and I'm plugging into one of the ones I was supposed to skip. But that's why it's good to have your reference materials handy. So we're going to miss this first header pin down here and just keep going up the row from there. Uh, Vivian asking again, what kind of solder am I using? Um, I probably should be using lead-free solder because that is smart and safe to use. Um, but this is some uh, 6040 rosin core, um, and I use that just because I'm really impatient. And uh, I, I just like the way 
that um, the non-lead free solder works. So I just make sure to wash my hands after any soldering job. All right, that's the keypad connected. While we're here, let's go ahead and stick the microphone or the, the antenna on, and that just snaps right into this junction point here. Uh, it just snaps into place. If you've ever, say, taken apart your modern cell phone because you, say, replace your screen or something like that, um, it's pretty much the exact same to snap in connector. It is a bit of a tricky snap fit. If I'm honest. There it goes. And it has uh, some adhesive backing here, so you can stick it on there. But we're just gonna we're just gonna let it hang freely. All right, that's done. Uh, two more things to get in place here uh, that we're gonna hot glue in. That is this speaker. We're just gonna set it right in there. Make sure these wires aren't going to get pinched anywhere. I'm gonna close this thing up. Get a little bit right up there and a little bit more. Apologies for the, the coffee hands there. And for the microphone, we're going to keep things really simple. Uh, we just need to hold it in place over that enclosure. Um, so I think. Might just use another little strip of electrical tape just to hold that in place. If I weren't just building it for this live video here, I'd want to do something to hold it in place a little bit more permanently. Um, But that'll do for today's build. And uh, yeah, we get a little bit of bonus there. We're holding down the, uh, the microphone, or we're holding down the antenna as well. OK, that is the front side of the phone all connected. Um, the only thing we still need to connect is the battery, um, which is what we're going to be putting into place in the back side of the phone here. First thing we need to do is, is glue in the power switch. That goes right into this hole right here. Uh, Jason Quill is asking, does the battery charge uh, through the micro USB on the phone. Yes, it does. That's one of my favorite features of the phono boards is that they have their own battery charging circuitry. Um, and I am noticing uh, this is a, a connection I pre-soldered for this power switch here. Um, this looks like a standard push button, but it's actually a power switch. Uh, See, so you, you press it once. It doesn't have a visible display of being on or off. Um, but uh, it does, it, it has a, a permanent state of on or off depending on the, uh, how many times you've pressed it. We will need to re-solder the connection there. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and, oh, I need to re-solder both connections. I should be less clumsy with this stuff. Okay. Gonna get a good amount of hot glue to hold this into place because that's the only thing that's holding this into place. And we're going to see, I mean, it doesn't require a huge amount of force to press this button, but enough that um, if we use a, only a tiny amount of glue, it might dislodge, and we don't want that. Um, but Jason, uh, to 
Uh, further answer your question, yes. Um, all of the Adafruit Feather boards have that function where um, the USB port will charge the battery. So you can just leave the battery plugged in and then you will get uh, good charging uh, for your battery components there. All right, I am just getting this wire stripped so I can re-solder the connections for the back of the, uh, or for that button there. And of course, it is a, it basically acts like any standard switch. So thankfully, polarity does not matter. I can get some helping hands in here to hold these wires into place while I, while I solder. All right, that's connected. And let's get the other side. Got that reconnected. Now the next thing is going to be gluing our LiPo battery into place. Um, it should go, we don't want it too high because we, we have them side by side. Uh, we don't want the bulk of the battery uh, to interfere with the bulk of the phone aboard. So I want to make sure we're completely clear of that. But this looks like it should be a, a good placement for it. And we have this extender cable here. That's what's going to connect. Uh, to our battery connector there on the uh, the phono board. Um, but let's go ahead and get this glued into place. couple of dabs of hot glue there should be fine to hold that in place and you can get all the information that you want about uh, the phone or any of the um, any of the Adafruit boards um, or any of the boards really that are that are currently on the market today um, in the boards guide uh, on makezine.com and in the uh, upcoming issue of make magazine volume uh, 57 which we are in production on right now um, so there's the connection for the battery that'll connect there and then we will plug in the battery into the phono board up here. All right, though, so the, the switch on the battery connector is still off. That's fine uh, because we still need to upload the code. We still need to upload the code to the Arduino board. All right, so don't need the soldering iron on anymore. Also, don't need the hot glue gun on anymore. At least we shouldn't. Get these tools out of the way and get the computer ready so we can get our code uploaded. Wake the computer up here. There we go. All right. So 
This is the code once again written by uh, Bob Murphy for this uh, for this project. And we'll just connect the board here. We'll see it light up. And go ahead and hit the upload button. All right, it says it's done uploading, and one of the other things that I want to do is I'm going to turn the battery power on, and that way we get, um, there isn't quite enough power in the, um, on the USB power from a, your computer enough to power all the functions of the phone, and, and one of the key things here we need to do is make sure that we are uh, able to see the connection. Um, Okay, now it's saying looking for service. Connected to network. Fantastic. So we should have a fully working cell phone. Um, I'm going to do a quick restart, and you'll see how quickly you can uh, power this thing down. I'm just going to press this power key here. Yeah, make sure it's going to come back up the way we think it's going to. Um, and then I'm going to close this up. And then I'm hoping somebody out there will call me. So we still see it's connecting. Still saying connecting. I'll try one more time. Maybe it really needs to talk to the computer to connect to the network. I don't know why this is happening with this version of this code. Um, we're going to make sure we get in touch with the project author and make sure that if there's anything wonky with this version of the code that, uh, that I'm running, that uh, it gets corrected in, the, in his Git repo. Yeah, something's not quite right here. So, let's power this down. Let's get it connected to a computer. Let's get it on power. Let's send the code to it again. Looking for service and connected to network. Great. Okay. I'm not going to touch anything here. We're going to pull that and close this up.
this extension cord for this battery is a whole lot longer than it really needed to be. So it's tricky to get it all closed up in here without pinching any wires. Which is a thing I still feel like I'm doing. These brass screws are fitting into threaded inserts that are already glued into place in the enclosure. And you don't need a special screwdriver to get into this phone. And there we have it. This is the diesel punk cell phone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the one that has the number on it. So if you want to go ahead and give me a call, uh, otherwise you, um, you press one and you can dial your number and you say one, five, five, one. and then you press the star key to dial. I can't remember. I think this actually this looks like a fake number. This five 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 one two one two, but I think this actually dials something here in San Francisco. Let's find out. I'm going to try and. Welcome to Directory Assistance. For English, please press one or stay on the line. Oh, it's Directory Assistance. Door, door. Okay. Well. So that's that. You can. City and state, please. No, I just want to hang up. Why isn't this hang up button working? Okay, there it goes. It disconnected. <clears throat> um, so this is the. So this is the the phone we have here. Um, and I am hoping somebody might try and give me a call. Um, you see you get a battery display, uh, number key to answer. Um, we didn't actually connect it, but there is also a solder pad on the, uh, the phono board um, that acts as a radio antenna. So you can actually hit uh, three there, and uh, you can actually get an FM radio. You should at least be able to see the um, display for it, though. So there we can see some of the... Uh, oh. Somebody is calling. Oh, no! Somebody is calling, and this is the worst. For some reason, my, uh, my pound sign key is not... Responding. That's not the way we're. The, hello. hello. Oh, it is. Hello. Who am I speaking with? This is Devin Norris. Devin Norris, Tyler Weingartner. Have you been uh, enjoying the live stream? I have. Um, I just stumbled on it uh, while I was checking my feed, and I'm probably going to build one of these for my grandparents. They're a little technophobic and uh, they struggle with their cell phones and them desperately at their age, so yeah, it seems like a, the call quality is pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed. 
Yeah, the call quality is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not getting the best cell phone reception here in the, in the building. We actually just moved offices here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, I could probably get closer to the windows to get a slightly better uh, call. But, yeah, I've been, uh, been impressed with the call quality so far. Um, and, uh, I mean, you, you may have seen some of the things I've been struggling with in this build today. Um, but the, uh, uh, we're going to make sure we get in touch with the, the project author and get those things buttoned up. Because I think it might just be a code issue of why that. Um, it's a little bit tricky to, to get the code running on this thing. But we're going to get that cleared up with the, uh, the author uh, real soon and get, get the new code posted to the, uh, to the repo. So you'll have no troubles when you uh, get around to it. Cool. Are you are you a maker yourself? Well, I'm assuming you are because uh, the um, you're you're checking out this channel and thinking you might go ahead and build this. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I, I started following Make Magazine uh, when I was about 20, about 10 years ago. Oh, fantastic! And, uh, yeah, I've been tinkering ever since. So cool. Actually, recycled like, an old project from that first issue I found into a new something else just recently, and I've been wanting to pick up my subscription again. But uh, yeah. That's great. Uh, what was the project that you built? Uh, the one from the first issue? Uh, uh, it wasn't from the first issue of Make, but the first one I caught. It was a uh, mini guitar amp. Oh, uh, yeah. The, um, is that the, yeah. the, guitar, the, the Cracker Box guitar amp? Yeah. That's, yeah, a, that that's a really, really fun project. Um, yeah, we uh, uh, built one of those for, I built one of those for a video um, uh, maybe around a year and a half ago. And, uh, yeah, really, really fun project to build and really satisfying outcome. Yeah, and I upcycled it a little bit with some cosmetic parts from my dad's old vintage microphone and everything. It turned out really good. Yeah, well, that's but, great. Uh, I just had one question about the phone. Uh, is there any power source other than uh, lithium polymer you would recommend if I wanted to say, like, use this as an emergency phone and store it for a long term? I live in Louisiana, and a lot of times, you know, the power can they're out for extended periods and uh, not a lot to plug into. I was thinking this might be good in a bug-out bag. Um, uh, you, might, it, you would probably need to modify the enclosure for it, but I think the best thing for something like that, um, I'm not sure if you get enough voltage. Um, you probably wouldn't get enough voltage out of a pair of double A's. Um, but that's the... the um, that's the direction I'd be looking in for uh, for something like that because double A's tend to store pretty well, and also you can drop in another set, um, you know, if you come across a fresh set or anything like that. So you have a lot more flexibility there. Uh, you might need to go up to three and double check against the um, the phono board specs to see what the voltage range it will accept. And of course, you're going to need a bigger enclosure, or you might need just a battery, uh, some kind of external battery bypass. You can ba bypass the LiPo and, and plug in your external source. Um, of course, you can also charge through the, um, the uh, uh, external or through the USB port. So if you get one of those uh, AA external battery enclosures, then you would be able to power it, um, tr power it through there. All right. And uh, if I discharge the lithium polymer and then just had a device to charge it in the bug out bag, uh, would that it should. I mean, uh, of course, you could also, you know, anything that um, you know provides you know the standard five volts over over USB port, um, you'll be able to recharge and power the the phono board through there. So, as long as you're able to do that, you have a, a lot of different options there for powering it. Um, you know, if the uh, if the lipo ever 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 drops out on you. All right. Well. Uh yeah, thank you very much for watching, and uh, thank you much for being a, a, such a long-time fan of Make Magazine. Yeah, right. always uh, well worth the subscription, and I'm kind of mad at myself for missing out the past year, but uh, I think you fixed that. Well, Thanks. hopefully uh, you'll, you'll enjoy uh, the next couple of issues that we have coming out, and uh, make sure to get the, uh, this one out to you soon. And uh, this project will be in the upcoming issue, yeah? This right. is... Uh, this one is the one that should be hitting newsstands, or just hit newsstands right now. Uh, so if you have a local bookseller that, that carries the Make Magazine, I would look for it now. It's, uh, it's actually this one, uh, if you're looking at the stream, this one right back here. Um, that says, don't try this at home. All right, then. Uh, yeah.
yeah, my local store stopped carrying it, but uh, I need to get a subscription anyway. Like I said, it's well worth it. Yeah. Well, for sure. Well, thank you very much for calling, and um, we will uh, we look forward to seeing you online uh, on uh, on Facebook soon. Yep. All righty. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So that couldn't have been a better demonstration of this phone. Uh, I want to, once again, thank you very much for uh, joining this stream and watching me and, and you know, work you through the build and, and some of the issues with that. Uh, once again, we want to thank DigiKey. Uh, they are our sponsor for this series. They are an electronic supplier that allow you to get all of the components that go into this build and many, many more. They're an awesome distributor of electronics uh, supplies. Uh, they ship really fast, and uh, they're a great partner to be working with on this series. So we want to make sure to thank them. Uh, once again, you can get all the details of this build on MakeScene.com or in the latest issue of Make Magazine, which is this one right here, Volume 56, which is our biohacking issue. And you can learn everything about the Adafruit Phono Board and any other boards that are available today in our online boards guide and in the upcoming issue of Make Magazine, which is all dedicated to all the different development boards like Raspberry Pi, Arduino and all the other uh, like ESP and all the other boards that are being developed today that are that are going to go into your next project. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time on Make Live. And remember what I told you. Yeah, yeah, don't make eye contact. He takes it as a personal challenge. Hello? Pat? Yes. Can I get a uh He'll take a Raspberry Pi 3. <laughs> No pie for you! <laughs> Told you. Hey, but I did hear this new deli. I can go pick up the sandwiches. No. Don't, Don't be held hostage by the board. Go to digikey.com to find thousands of boards in stock, all ready for immediate shipment.